is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable ribbed crochet pumpkins. My bulky and quick rib pumpkin pattern has been so popular I wanted to do another version of it. It's a little bit different rib stitch you may find it a little bit easier and also this pumpkin pattern is in worsted weight yarn with six sizes in total. So if you loved my bulky and quick pattern, I think you're going to love this one as well. I will link the bulky one in the description box below because they do work up a little bit quicker with bulky yarn. These pumpkins still work up really quick and I think you're going to love this unique rib stitch I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. Now because these pumpkins come in six sizes, you can easily stack them, which is a quite popular thing to do right now. So you could take um, your largest size and then you could take one of, I haven't glued in my sticks just so I can take them off for stacking. So you could stack one of the medium sized pumpkins and then one of the small pumpkins could go right on top of that so you have a nice stack and likewise we can go with the with the next size down and then I am going to show you how to make our tiniest pumpkin size today so you can stack them or leave them just like this you can make a variety of sizes all in one size really whatever you want and these are amazing sellers at craft markets they always do so so well for anyone who's making um, my patterns these do really really great at markets okay so the yarn that i have used for this pattern is wander acrylic yarn from furls crochet i used this yarn in my harvest twist ear warmer i absolutely loved the color options the beautiful sheen that i just had to use this yarn to make these pumpkins so many gorgeous colors to choose from and i will link the yarn in the description box with a coupon code if you're interested in purchasing it if not you can use any worsted weight yarn for this project so this is a number four weight yarn and the color that I'm going to show you in today, which will be nice and easy to see, is sandbar. I will also be using a five millimeter crochet hook. This is your H size hook and this is the Streamline um, Cookies and Cream Swirl Hook. And this I find this hook just glides so well with the yarn works out really great so also I will link that in the description box and you can use your coupon code as well for the hooks and the yarn. Additional supplies you'll need for this pattern is you're going to need some polyester fiber fill for stuffing your pumpkins. I like to use some twine but it's just optional. You could also even add little ribbon bows. Um, plaid would look really cute for fall. Really whatever you want. I use cinnamon sticks as my base which I love the smell of the cinnamon for fall. You could also use little wooden sticks, anything really you can find, but the cinnamon sticks you can just find at your local grocery store, really inexpensive option. You'll need a yarn needle, and it's also good to have a measuring tape just so you can measure to make sure you're on track with your gauge. Okay, so we're going to begin by making a slip knot and putting that on our hook. And I'm going to begin by chaining out 17. Now, if you click on the link in the description box to the blog, you will get the amount of chain for all six sizes. So now we're going to work into the back humps of the chain rather than the back loop of the chain. We're going to go in to the third chain from the hook, one, two, three, so and then turn it and you're going to see that back hump. We're going to work a double crochet into that. Okay. 
Here is our next hump. We'll work a double crochet. So we'll yarn over, go through the back hump, picking up a loop, pulling it through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll continue working double crochets across our chain. So you will need a total of 15 stitches for our extra small size pumpkin. Okay, so once you've worked all the way across, you should have 15 stitches. We'll chain one and turn. And now we'll start into our ribbed pattern. It's always worked on the wrong side and it is separated by a double crochet row. So what we'll do is a single crochet in the first stitch and then we'll be doing a linked slip stitch. So we're going to go through the same stitch as our single crochet, pulling up a loop, go through the next stitch, and then we're going to take that loop and we're going to pull it through the two loops on the hook. So we're going to go through the same stitch. We're linking these two stitches together. So we're pulling up a loop, go through the next stitch. We're pulling up a loop and we're pulling that loop, making that slip stitch right through the two loops on the hook. Pulling them through and try not to do them too tight. You want to keep this nice and loose. And once you get going at it, you can actually work it pretty quickly, but just get used to the stitch first. Get used to your tension. Okay, so once we get to the final stitch, we're finishing it with a single crochet. Now we'll chain two and turn. So you can see how that has pushed out those stitches for that nice ribbed look. Now when we work back our double crochet row, I want you to turn so that you can see the stitch. And now we'll work a double crochet in the back loops only of the stitch. So going through the back loop only. And you may want to count just to make sure that you do stick with your 15 stitches throughout. So I'll complete working my double crochets across. Okay, so once you get to the end of the row, I'll chain one and turn. And then we're back to the linked slip stitch that we're gonna work across this row. We're going through the full stitch when we're doing this. So we're gonna work our first stitch as a single crochet, going back down through the seam stitch, pulling up a loop, go through the next stitch, pulling up a loop, pulling that through the two loops on the hook. And we're going to continue with that all the way across. Okay, so I'll work across my row and meet you up again. Okay, so when you get to the end of the row, we're gonna work a single crochet in the last stitch, chain two and turn. And then we're back to working our doubles in the back loop only. And we're gonna continue just working in rows in this manner until you have a total of 17 rows. We're gonna end on a double crochet row. So you can count your rows by twos, one, two, two, four, 
six, etc. So your raised ridged row will be um, the second row, the fourth row, the sixth row, etc. So you're going to end on a double crochet row, work up a total of 17, and then meet me back up. Okay, so for our tiny extra small size here, I've worked up 17 rows. And you can count by twos. So here was our first row, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And we're ending on that double crochet row. And now what we'll do is you wanna put your rectangle like this, you're gonna fold it upwards so that your wrong sides are facing. So I've chained one. Now what you wanna do is find that very first stitch on this side of your work, push your hook through, go to the first stitch here, through right through here, and we're gonna make a slip stitch to join. So now we'll just work across going through every stitch on both sides and slip stitch. Because we worked in the back hump, we have this nice little stitch to work into. It can be a little tight depending on how tight you made that starting chain, but just wiggle your hook through, just slowly work across slip stitching through each stitch until we have this completely seamed up. Okay, so once you have worked that across, just chain one to get that secured. I'm gonna show you how this looks. You can see how that slip stitch join really just blends in to the rib stitch look. So it's really seamless, it looks great. So now what we're gonna do is close up this end of the pumpkin. So we've already chained one, and now what we'll do is single crochet around, okay? So we're skipping every other row. I'm just going up into the chain here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then in that very first single crochet, we're gonna slip stitch to join. Okay, and then we can fasten this off. You're gonna need a bit of a tail. We're gonna do some weaving here to close in the pumpkin. So I'm gonna take my yarn needle and I'm gonna weave through the front loop of every stitch around. I just like to put as many loops on my needle as I can just to speed up the process. So just going through the front loops only. We're gonna do that all the way around. And you can pull it tight. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. And now we're just gonna continue to do some more weaving. We want, the weaving always helps to tighten up that circle. It's really easy on this smaller size, but as you get into the bigger ones, you'll notice that the weaving really does help to pull that circle in tight. Okay, and then once you've done a bit of weaving the one way we're just going to go back in the opposite direction and that is going to secure it we're just hiding the yarn needle around hiding the yarn through the stitches okay and then once you have done enough weaving you're just going to trim and then we have the base of our pumpkin closed up can see this is just a little tiny one we're making we're now going to stuff it with some polyester fill now depending on how much you stuff your pumpkins you may notice that they can come out a little bit different in size 
I just like to give it a good, keep kind of shoving it down. Well, I think I've got enough in there. I just find doing a lot of, this can help again, like smooth out to get the nice shape that you want. And I am just gonna weave this tail in just to get it out of the way. before I close up the top. You could also crochet over it, but I'm gonna crochet over my tail that I join in. So I'm just gonna weave this one just to be done with it so it doesn't get in my way. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing that I did to the base to the top. So I'm gonna join in with my yarn. Chain one and we're gonna work a single crochet. Now I find if you make sure you single crochet into the, the ringed, part of the row it helps to pull this in a little bit nicer so just try to work through this when you're single crocheting around so one two three four Once we get all the way around, we'll slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. And then we want a long tail. Really as long as you can work with, especially when you get up to the bigger sizes because it's much easier if we don't have to join any more yarn on for making the indents. Now this hole is already pretty small, but what you wanna do is just find a cinnamon stick that you're gonna use as a, a gauge here for how much to weave. You don't wanna close the circle in completely. Now, if you want to have your pumpkins stacked, you know you're gonna have them stacked and you don't want the cinnamon stick then just close it all the way but if you're going to want to add a cinnamon stick to the top you want to make sure you leave that little hole so we're going to do the same thing we're going to work through the front loops only to close it up the only difference is is we don't want to fully close the top So you just want it to fit snug around your cinnamon stick. And then I'm gonna to continue to weave. Once I kind of have that, sometimes you can just sort of stick your finger. This one's a little small, but you can stick your finger in once you kind of have the rough size. And once you start weaving that back in the opposite direction, it is going to secure that hole. So you don't have to worry about tugging it in too tight. Okay, so now we want to make our indents. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my needle down. I'm gonna hide it through the double crochet row and I'm gonna hide it through the stitches. See how you can just sort of weave your yarn needle right under those stitches. So it's just gonna keep that yarn in place and then we're gonna go down through the base and pop back up through the top. And we're gonna give it a tuck. Okay, so you're gonna see where it's indenting right here. Now I'm going to skip one of my double crochet rows and I'm gonna go ahead I'll skip this one and then I'm going to go ahead and go through. My needle pull through there. And I'm going to weave through these stitches again. And this honestly it just it just hides them I think my original pattern I just pulled the strings through but this does hide them keeps them in place I think it's just a little bit neater give that a tug we're gonna come back up through the top okay and I'm just gonna continue that around so I'm gonna skip this one and go through the next one and so on so now some of the pumpkins, they won't necessarily add um, end exactly even. So you can kind of just decide where to either leave one of your sides a little bit bigger or go down maybe the center. And then once that is complete, you're just going to want to weave in this tail. Okay, so now I ended up with my weaving, I made my hole a little bit smaller. So I've picked one of my smaller cinnamon sticks, which is fine because this pumpkin's so tiny. But what I'm going to do as well is add some twine to that. I'm just waiting for my glue gun to heat up but then all you need to do to secure these in the tops is just add some glue and then you can stick it in and then it won't come so I know that this little pumpkin here will be a topper for sure so I don't mind gluing it and now if we just take a look I'm going to remove this one Okay, so this would be a nice match for our stackable. So this would be our extra small. This is our small, which are, we're skipping. So then the medium size, this one would be the large, this one would be the extra large. So our larger stack then would go with our XX large pumpkin. 
okay? And the large one, and then down to the small. So you can have two different si sizes of stacks. Now, if you for sure want to keep your pumpkins stacked, you could also use some yarn to go through the bottom, push all the way up the top, and you could secure these together. So you may have to pull through one, go through, pull through the next, and then pull through the next to attach those. But you could easily do that if you don't want them falling apart. These would look really cute, the stacks, if you added like a little plaid bow or something to the top, but the twine looks nice too. And you can even get your twine in green if you wanna add a little bit of green to the look. Okay, so here is your finished pumpkin. You can see how nice the ribbing looks and how nice it is hiding that strand of yarn to pull in those indents and how easy and quick this little guy was to make. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap that bell so that you stay notified of all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.